Otsego Lake have had a lot of changes, good and bad, over the last several decades. It matters that the water that we release from the Otsego Lake is as clean as possible so that the downstream communities can rely on that. In order to effectively manage lakes and watershed, we need to have good data. We cannot just speculate based on what happened in the past or what is happening in other lakes. We would like to preserve the lake so that the local community can keep enjoying the lake. And I also would like to keep studying the lake. Hi, I'm Stephanie Andrews. Climate scientist. Ocean adventurer and system specialist at Nexens. This is Otsego Lake in New York, the headwater of the Susquehanna River that meets the North Atlantic at Chesapeake Bay. The lake has had a colourful history. Harmless algae painted the lake a moderate green until invasive zebra mussels became established around 2010. These mussels are filter feeders, meaning they consume suspended particles like algae, leading to increased water clarity. In 2022, the lake suffered its first bloom of cyanobacteria. These blooms can be indicators of water quality issues, fueled by problems like runoff events and invasive species. But the exact cause of the 2022 bloom remains a mystery. Eager to scour the data for clues is Dr. Kyoko Yokota, Associate Professor of Biology at the State University of New York. Cyanobacteria are probably the oldest life form on Earth. They are actually bacteria that happens to photosynthesize. They are part of the regular ecosystem in the water, but when they flourish, then that causes problem 2022 and on, we have bouts of cyanobacterial blooms that are dominated by cyanobacteria, especially Mycocystis aeruginosa. And that one can cause uh, issues in terms of toxin production. So having 24 seven high frequency data collection really is important for this kind of bloom. Kyoko works with the Otsego Lake Watershed Supervisory Committee, a collaborative effort by the four municipalities around the lake. This in turn works with the New York State Department of Conservation, and together they've developed the Nine Element Plan, a lake and watershed management plan. This plan's success is periodically evaluated using models built on both manual and autonomously collected data. We are using the data buoy that is collecting data 24 seven. It was deployed in 2017. And the Suni Onionta fuel station had been manually sampling the deepest part of the lake. That has been going on for decades. So we deployed the buoy at the same place so that we would have continuous data. The Nexens CB950 buoy comprises an AMR weather station, a Lycor LI-190R PAR sensor, a Nexens X-Series data logger, and two YSI XO2 sons. All sons measure temperature, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, and pH, and are deployed throughout the water column to take measurements at different depths. The upper sonde has two additional sensors to measure total algae via phycocyanin and fluorescence. The buoy sends the data through mobile data um, to the data center, and then I can access the data through the internet. It is tremendously helpful that I can check the data from anywhere. In addition to the data buoy that is in the lake during the ice-free season, 
I also um, have the temperature loggers that are under ice. So I have both winter and summer high frequency data. The data from the buoy has given Kyoko comprehensive data on the lake before, during, and after bloom events. The high frequency nature of data collection is really a game changer. Having weekly or monthly average just does not cut it anymore. Since I started to have the high frequency data, I definitely started to know more about the lake. It's been very interesting to see what happens at night because that's the kind of data that we would never really get to see and also when the weather is rough but the buoy is still collecting data and we can see how for example thermocline starts to disappear in late fall when we have storms. Through a combination of methods Kyoko's research is shedding light on Otsego Lake's subsurface secrets and the science extends far beyond this 4,000 acre lake. Kyoko's lab is part of GLEON, the Global Lake Ecological Observatory Network, meaning the data that's acquired here is shared internationally, supporting the sustainable management of lakes and reservoirs worldwide. We do a lot of studies where we gather data from multiple lakes so that we can decipher what kind of underlying process could be going on that is common to different lakes. Having the high frequency data really helps our data to be useful in that kind of network study because many other lakes collect data in a very similar way with their data buoys. I am very positive that we are in the right direction to work as a community to improve the water quality into the future. However, there are a lot of um, science that needs to be done to achieve that goal. Otsego Lake is one of many in the Great Lakes region and worldwide that's grappling with new and pre-existing challenges of invasive species, cyanobacteria blooms, and anthropogenic change. With better data, Kyoko is supporting the sustainable management of this valuable resource, benefiting the wildlife that call it home and the many visitors who come to enjoy its natural beauty. Visit nextsense.com for more information. Nextsense. Better data. It's never been easier.